Yesterday on the stream, I tried to react to this video, but I was not sure what exactly I was watching. The audio was scuffed and everything like that. I really like that guy. He's bigger than me, obviously, but I kind of want to share also my story for Cataclysm and why Cataclysm is so special for me. So let's just jump into it. Let's see what that guy has to say. And uh, before I move any further, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And let's just jump into it. World of Warcraft Cataclysm, a game that unironically had a big impact on the internet. One that many of you, especially those of you who are steadily losing hair, may remember. I'm not losing hair, by the way, I'm just saying, just saying. Quests, or taking on the new difficult dungeons, or it may be through the eyes of someone digging through YouTube for the first time. Because Cataclysm... Or maybe I'm losing hair, I'm not sure. ...new internet era. But for me, it was a whole new chapter that was about to open. Because going back almost 15 years, that is when I... I made this channel. So let me tell you about that journey. Such a... Such an inspiration, such a good thing. Because for me, Cataclysm was special as well. Cataclysm was the first expansion that I have played in Blizzard. More about that later. But first, to keep everything ethical and more importantly, to keep everything legal, I have to tell you that indeed this video is sponsored by World of Warcraft Cataclysm. And you're about to see... This video is sponsored but Why am I not sponsored by World of Warcraft Cataclysm? I'm the biggest fan. I'm streaming every day on Twitch. I'm busting my... Anyway. I, I am happy it is. As many of you may know, I've been playing World of Warcraft since about 2006. And the hints for this being the case can be found all over this channel. From me playing with WoW's model viewer to get some nice silhouettes of characters for my storytelling, to using WoW's amazing soundtrack for the ambient atmosphere. It is undoubtable that this channel was heavily affected by this game. But out of all of WoW's expansions, Cataclysm had by far the biggest impact. And what's interesting is that I'm not the only one who was going through this, not by a long shot. As I was saying, I was going, uh, I was affected by this as well. Uh, this was so special expansion for me because for the first time I was not playing in private server and I was like, holy shit, is it actually possible for this game to not be buggy? And I was surprised that it was not buggy because in the private servers you hit a mob and it doesn't care if it has LOS. It doesn't care how long you're attacking it from. It will always chase you. It doesn't matter if you're on an elevated server. It will fly to you even if it's not a flying mob. E2010 is interesting because alongside Cataclysm, YouTube was booming as well. And when combined... Dude, this shit is ugly. These two gave way to a lot of amazing creators. By far the biggest one at the time was Total Biscuit, seen as the king of covering Cataclysm Beta. Through other websites, such as the MMO Champion, he was given a spotlight that not only introduced new viewers to his channel and WoW's new content, but he introduced people to YouTube in general. I know this because I was one of these people. You can actually find me in his last ever postcards of Azeroth, which was from Cataclysm. In fact, I was so blown away by the fact that someone can just make videos on the internet about WoW that I got inspired to make this very channel. I may have been 15 and I may have needed the consent of my father to even make the account, but I was there. But of course, Total Biscuit wasn't the only one. The Yogscast got quite a massive boost from covering Cataclysm. As well as... Dude, I didn't know... I never watched these guys. I never watched these guys, but I'm surprised that these guys ever covered World of Warcraft. I had a friend that was watching Total Biscuit and I was left with the impression that Total Biscuit was hating World of Warcraft because my, fan, my friend was kind of hating World of Warcraft. He was always telling me, uh, why are you playing this dead game? Sadness. 
TikTok creators such as Jesse Cox, who back then was known as OMFG Kada. But now you may be wondering, you were 15. There was no way your English was good enough to make something comprehensible. So what kind of content did you make? Well, guides, of course. See, if you go to the oldest videos found on this channel, you may notice some videos of World of Warcraft Cataclysm, specifically showing you some content from the Firelands patch as well as the end time. But those are not the first videos I made. No, I can actually show you my first videos because I kept all the receipts, even though the videos are deleted. And again, it relates to how YouTube behaved back in 2010. Over the years, it changed a lot, and throughout these... Dude, R.I.P. Adobe Flash Player, right? It was a great time. In order to play a game or watch a video, Adobe Flash Player, amazing. ...it lost some cool features. For example, way back in the day, you could actually upload an image as a background for your channel. It was similar to old school blogs. And with a bit of creativity, you could shape the image to fit YouTube's overlay. You know what's awesome about all of this? I kept all the original images on my computer. So as an example, behold the background that represented my channel. What's cool about this is that it still has the original metadata. So you can see that this image dates back to December the 5th, 2010. Two days before Cataclysm came out. Hence why you can see Deathwing on the top. But this really doesn't tell you about my first proper video. No, that one is revealed in this screenshot. My own... By the way, is he, is he wearing a pajama? Sorry, I'm, I'm super distracted because of that. He cannot be wear, wear, wearing pajamas, right? YouTube channel where, besides the Doom video, I released a World of Warcraft guide called Paladin Protection Tutorial. Easy tutorial how to tank in Cataclysm with Paladin. On the 31st of December in 360p. And yes, that 360p was was the thing back in the day, you know? So my very first subscriber. You see, because my English was bad back then, and not that it really improved, I just wrote on screen what you had to do with broken English. And I wasn't even good at the game, but I wanted to make videos, and that's how my journey began. And so can yours, because Cataclysm is back. That's right, World of Warcraft Classic reached the Cataclysm era, which means that Blizzard released a version of WoW that plays as it did back in 2010. It is literally a time capsule of the time I made this channel. What is interesting about this expansion is that this is where Blizzard started making the players a bit more of a part of their storytelling. On one side, some could argue that this is where WoW lost a bit of its sandboxy aspects, but on the other side, the world started feeling more alive. And as a result, the lore of this world became more popular. Faction leaders had proper story arcs. We got a reason why we travel to all the different regions. And the entire expansion got a storyline with a beginning, a middle and an end. With, of course, the main villain being Deathwing, Death who simply woke up and uh, destroyed half of the world. Now, while to many, the classic Warcraft saga ended with the death of the Lich King, to the broader audience, Deathwing was just as interesting, if not more interesting than anything that came before. Because even without massive advertising, at least uh, compared to what I would do later, Cataclysm cinematic was simply so good, it quite literally gripped the entire gaming sphere on the internet, pulling off even bigger numbers than what the cinematic for Wrath of the Lich King got. If you combine that with Blizzard's still undefeated cinematic quality, this cinematic was all that Cataclysm needed. And as a result, this is where WoW's player numbers peak. It was at this point that WoW mastered the crafting of its environment, which is also why during Cataclysm all the old zones were... And I really like that, guys. Because everyone is... Um, not everyone, but a lot of people are saying that this is uh, the reason they left WoW. Why? It, 
do I, I just don't get it. The, the zones became not necessarily better, but they changed the look, they changed the music, they changed the feel. They change every now, once in a while, it's cool, right? Their game was simply on a whole new level. What was seen as barren before simply got better and better with anything that WoW released after that point. But on top of that, WoW just got really good at setting up villains. Every new zone of Cataclysm had a great story from the beginning to the end. Mount Hygel was a zone that players wanted to explore ever since the original WoW, because this is where the famed World Tree was in the events of Warcraft 3. And 8 years later we finally got a chance to do so, with the main villain being Ragnaros. Again. And, and so the players fought through waves of fiery elements attacking the heart of nature. In Deepholm the players got to delve deep beneath the earth, to a place that quite literally held up the realms above. The issue is, when Deathwing woke up, he broke the pillar that was holding it, so we got a chance to rebuild it. And in the Twilight Highlands, we got an amazing story that dealt with the war between the orcs and the dwarves. This really felt like a good old classic Warcraft story. But at the same time, Blizzard... I never, I never had the opportunity to explore that zone very well, which is a little bit unfortunate, but... It is what it is. Sprinkled in some fighting with the cultists of the old gods. And if you didn't want to deal with these grand stories and you wanted to see an adventure that was closer to the ground, Cataclysm had you covered too. Uldum was released as one massive reference to Indiana Jones. It's a zone where you delve into tombs, you search for treasures, I love that you zone. get cursed and you spend a lot of time in the desert. And lastly... There is also a zone that a lot of people did not appreciate. I mean, actually, a lot of people from my guild appreciate the zone. I'm not sure who really doesn't appreciate the zone. It's a unique zone. It's a really unique zone. It's the first zone that it's, I don't know, entirely underwater and it's unique and it's cool. But I personally don't like being underwater. And I feel like Blizzard haven't figured out fully how to do this properly. That's why I didn't enjoy it. Maybe they have figured out how to do this properly. The the mount helps. I, I don't know. I didn't feel it. Did? I thought it was fine. But because Blizzard hasn't fully figured out verticality just yet, some quests were confusing. And of course, I'm talking about Bashir, a fully underwater zone that really feels like a zone where you are flying all the time. Again, I actually like this place, but I understand if some people didn't know where to go. That's even with the new quest markers. But this is not where the adventuring ends. Because over the course of Cataclysm, Blizzard did something new. They would introduce whole new zones as parts of bigger patches. Now previously they did try similar things with other expansions. But the new part comes from Cataclysm fully leaning into this. And when the Firelands patch arrived, they released the Molten Front, which is perhaps my favorite addition to Cataclysm. It paid off a lot of the cooler storylines, Ragnaros came back, which was cool because I never got to fight him in vanilla, and the entire zone actually progressed with the story. Each week, as players did their quests here, they would fill up a bar. And once that bar was filled, the entire server would move to the next... I don't remember that story, part. I was playing more PvP, but... Which transformed what the zone looked like. It was honestly amazing to see this level of storytelling progression. And after Blizzard tried it with the two previous expansions, this time they evolved it in an amazing way. But of course, the most important information here is that I love this patch so much... This is where I started making WoW videos. Really bad ones, but they were videos after all. And now I am getting ready to dive into all of this again with Cataclysm's classic version. See, lately WoW has been on an adventurous journey. Simply said, the devs really started experimenting with new things. It started with the massive success of classic WoW, this evolved into another great success called Season of Discovery, True. which is basically where Blizzard went back to an older version of WoW and they started giving it new content. And in retail, WoW started going wild too. First, we got Plunderstorm, which was essentially a game mode which turned WoW into a battle royale. And while that word may scare a lot of people, this was a really good one. 
but that may be because I had 20 years to master the controls of this game and uh, I was quite good at it. And now, after Plunder... I was not good at it. You know, I, I have played 15 years this game and I sucked. Went away because it was a limited time event. Blizzard released Pandaria Remix, which is a new game mode where you go back to the Pandaria expansion and they treat the game as a bit of a make-your-own-adventure roguelike. Simply said, the WoW team has been killing it lately. And the Classic team has its audience figured out. And somewhat secretly, I've been playing Classic WoW as well as Season of Discovery in the background the whole time. I mean, whenever Guzu is raiding, who do you think you can find in his raid? That's me, and I've been having a blast. So if you feel up to it, you can try the very same game that quite literally made this channel. That was the point where the gameplay picked up its pace, the villains started feeling more impactful, and the story reached a whole new dimension, which might be why I became a lore nerd. Of course, if you want to give it a shot, the link is in the description. And don't forget that you can play as the Goblin and the Worgen, who wear top hats. Look, the expansion can't get better than that. True and real. It can get better than that. Great video. Uh, Cataclysm is special for me as well. Before Cataclysm, I was playing Wrath of the Lich King on private servers my whole life. I didn't quite enjoy it. Uh, but now I'm having a blast. I'm having Guild in Cataclysm. We're working as a team. And I can't wait to go into the raids, do some PvP and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's it for me, boys and girls. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm sorry for the scuffed quality, as I said. I'm temporarily in Italy, visiting girlfriend and stuff like that. And uh, my setup is a little bit scuffed. My time is a little bit scuffed. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.